Hey everybody, this is a short tutorial on how to use an A6000 series Sony camera. Uh, A6600, A6400, A6000, A6100, all of those fall into this range. It look very similar. This one is an A6400 as you can see on the uh, lower left hand side. Uh, so first thing to go over is how to turn the camera on and off. Uh, it's just this little switch right here. You can see you can turn it off, turn it on. Obviously, when not in use, you want to shut it off. Even if you're walking around for a minute or two, uh, they, they turn on and off really, really fast. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, you know, you just don't want to lose battery. So turn it off when you're not using it. Okay, so uh, you can see right here this dial. And there's all kinds of settings in here. But the one that we're going to be using for this is manual, which means we're going to be able to control everything manually. Uh, this is a shutter priority, aperture priority, program, auto. There's a bunch of other modes that we can use. But for this uh, lesson and learning how to use these cameras properly, we'll go ahead and use the manual mode. Okay, so let's look at the back here. So as you can see, this is our manual dial right there, or our mode dial. And we have another dial right here. And this dial is going to let us change the f-stop. So if I go ahead and I roll this, this way you can see the f-stop is changing. Now that the f-stop is larger, it's letting in more light so the image looks brighter. And if we pull up the histogram, and the way I'm going to do that is this dial right here is kind of like a keypad that you might have on a game uh, controller. I'm just going to press up and there I get my histogram. So that's a, this is just going for the display. It says DISP and I can change the stuff that it's displaying on screen. So right now we could see that the histogram is clipping because I just lowered the f-stop, meaning that more light is, is getting in because the aperture is open wider. Okay, so how might we change the ISO or something else to make it so we get a good, nice, balanced histogram? Well, let's go into the ISO. So all I have to do is use this keypad, press it once to the side, and you can see there's the ISO numbers. And this thing, this keypad also rolls. It's like a dial that rolls. So I can go ahead and pull this down to, let's say, 100. And hit the middle button there's a button right in the middle you just hit that and it'll let go of that screen and go back to the normal screen i'm gonna hit up twice for the display this display uh, is something that the the exposure uh, that we're getting is going to be uh, set or at least be able to be visualized by this uh, little set of numbers here and there's a little tick mark over it and when it's at the when that tick mark is at the zero that means we have our setting just the way we want it, okay? So um, this little uh, graph that you would see right there is actually inside the viewfinder, uh, on the bottom of the viewfinder. Whenever you're shooting with your eye up there, you will actually see that. So to see it in on the back panel, you have to actually change the display to uh, show that. So right now, let's see where we were again. Actually, you can go down on this, I take that back, you can't go down, you always have to go up. Okay, so we are still uh, a little overexposed. It says we're overexposed by 0 0.7. So to make it so we're less exposed, we can go ahead and change the shutter. Uh, and to change the shutter, I'm going to go ahead and just come up here. We just roll this dial. So we can go a little bit faster and now you can see right here that we're not overexposed. You get that 0.0. .0. That means we're right in the middle. So we've just learned that rolling, uh, changing the shutter speed is just rolling this dial back and forth, okay? And we can watch that little number right there to see if we're overexposed or not. The f-stop, once again, is this dial. So I can change the f-stop. Let's go a little bit darker. So we're gonna get more depth of field because we've, we're dialing down the aperture. So it gives us more depth of field, but it's going to let in less light. So then we have that issue. So what we do then is let's up the ISO a little bit. Click the button off to the side, roll the ISO, and let's see if we can, where are we at there? We're at 0.3 over. So um, 
I like to be either right on or a little bit under. So right there. There we go. 0, 0.0. Okay, so that's pretty much like a perfect exposure. Let's go over a couple more things and then we can get going and start taking pictures. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to press this function button right here. It says FN. Okay, there's a few different settings in the function button and I'm going to drop down a little lower so I can see what these say. This is for flash, the one that's on right there. I actually don't want the flash on. So um, I would actually come up to like turn the flash off. Uh, I'm not sure why it won't let me shut that off. Hmm, interesting. In manual mode, you should be able to shut that off, but it's telling me I can't, I'm not sure why. All right, let's go back to the function. We don't have to worry about that too much. Um, okay, so drive mode. So if we click on this, we could see that we're set to single shooting, which is perfect for what we're doing right now because we're just taking individual shots one at a time. If you want to have like your high speed shots where you're taking multiple shots, it's just clicking one down, that's the high speed. If you want a, a shutter delay for two seconds in this case, then you can turn this up by just clicking over. So you got a five second, you have a two second, you have a 10 second. I'm usually, sometimes I do use this uh, if I want to make sure that there's no camera shake when I'm, I'm taking a picture and I have it on a tripod. Okay, so we're not going to concern ourselves with these other ones. They go into a little bit more advanced stuff, but uh, we'll just go ahead and click the function button again and bring ourselves back. Oh, looks like it set the one that I was on last. Okay, so we want this one. Okay, so the single focus and I'm going to go ahead and hit the function button again. And this is the autofocus. So the focus mode is set to single autofocus. So this is, um, this is good for what we're doing here. Uh, you could do an automatic uh, if you wanted in some cases, but that's probably not the best for this. And there's also continuous. This is what you would use for video typically. And then of course you've got your manual focuses. So we're not doing that because that makes life hard. I'm only, I'm manually focusing on the camera I'm recording with just because I don't want it to change my, uh, my focus settings because I'm looking the other direction. So let's see what we got here. Go back to function. Okay, so this is our focus area. We click on that, click on the middle button. And right now I have it set to center, which just means that there's this little box right in the middle. And that little box is always going to be what it's looking, the area that's looking for to get um, contrast and get a focus. So you can set this to different things. It depends on what you're working with. Zone, you can set up different zones uh, within the, the parameters here. You can set it to wide, which kind of looks all over the place. And then you can actually control exactly where that focus box is. Uh, it doesn't go all the way to the edge, but it gets pretty close. So for this, we're gonna leave it at center for right now, just because it's gonna make things easier. And you'll always know that if something's within the middle of that box, that's where it's going to focus. It isn't the best for composition if you're doing like rule of thirds or anything like that, but just for learning the camera, that's fine. So we'll go back to function. And um, you have other controls that you can go to in here. Uh, one thing is white balance. So for right now, I'm under an incandescent light and I know that. So I actually set my white balance to incandescent. And there's other settings here. You can see this is cloudy, this is shade, this is sunlight. Um, so as I roll through these, uh, that's a floral. Uh, and they, they just have different settings. And then you can actually do a custom white balance, which we will eventually do. Uh, or we can actually do that in post, as long as you're taking raw pictures. So I'm gonna leave it at incandescent because that's the light that I'm under. Um, but what I do is like to pull it off of auto white balance just so I know that it's not gonna keep changing on me. Like if the camera does a little uh, metering of the light and it thinks it's a different color, uh, this way it just stays consistent. I can change it in post as long as I'm shooting raw pictures. So um, the cameras should be set to raw uh, to take raw pictures. But if you, you know, for some reason found that you weren't getting raw pictures, you just go to the menu and it's actually literally the first thing in the whole entire menu system is file format. And you can see it's set to raw. So um, you can actually take like raw and JPEG at the same time if you want, or you can take just JPEG only. Um, it, but for these, the, the raw pictures are better, especially because what that does is it lets us change the white balance later. So as far as the functions go, I think we're pretty good. Actually, it looks like you can change it right here, file format. Yeah, raw plus JPEG, JPEG. So you can do that right from the function menu. Okay, and 
we won't go into metering modes right now. We don't need to. Uh, this is good. This is enough to get you started on shooting manually. So um, just remember, if you're hand holding, you're probably going to want your shutter speed a little bit faster unless you're nice steady hand or unless you get sometimes some cameras have IBIS, which is in body stabilization. Um, this one does not. So you got to watch that. Um, this goes down to 3.5. So that'll let, let a little bit more light in. Uh, you can get your drop your ISO then so you get a cleaner picture less noise the lower the ISO the less noise it is and there you go we've got what are we at 0, 0.0 so there you go that's all you have to do if you half click the shutter button which is this button where the on off switch is uh, if you half click it you'll hear like a little beep and you'll see a little green box that comes up uh, clicking it like that just lets you know that you're focused and then you click all the way down to take the full picture and that's basically it that's all we need to know for this first round and this is a macro lens that i have on here a 30 millimeter macro lens so you can get pretty close to the subject uh on a crop sensor camera that this is you take the 30 millimeters and you multiply it by 1.5 so it's equivalent to 45 millimeters on a full frame so if you had a full 45 millimeter lens on a full frame camera this would be the same uh, field of view. This is 24 megapixels, uh, so you're gonna get a lot of nice resolution out of this. It's a very good lens too. Um, that's it, so let's have fun and go take up some pictures and we'll go and post-process them later. All right, thanks for watching.